Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. We're back with the latest Manchester United transfer news, giving that real fan opinion on all the latest Manchester United transfer news. I'm going to start off with Bruno Fernandes. He isn't the title of the show, but I know a lot of people are interested in that. We'll also be talking about Lozano, Van der Beek, Oblak, Jam Hammers Rodriguez, and then he called him Jamie Rodriguez then. He has scored a few good free kicks, but I think he meant it. But let's start off with Bruno Fernandes because he did make some quotes, um, genuine quotes from him. So what he basically said is yesterday, I know nothing. I'm going to take the next few days to find out what's going on in relation to my transfer. Um, if an offer came in that I can't refuse, then obviously I'd want to speak to Sporting Lisbon about it. Um, um, and that's the situation from Bruno Fernandes at the moment. Boxing clever. He was also asked directly about uh, Italy. He's played in Italy before for Udinese and Sampdoria. And he said, look, I still keep in contact with Italian football. I still watch it. And he referenced Inter Milan um, and also said that, you know, um, we'd have to wait and see. There's some good teams in Italy. So not closing the door to Italy, not closing the door to anything. Very, very open-minded. I, I, I still think he's going to be a Manchester United player. There's, why, why, would, why would we not think that? But... United have got to push the deal. United have got to want to do the deal. And as we've seen with United before, sometimes United are in a very strong position to do a deal and they don't get over the line for various reasons. We saw it with Perisic for two years. Mourinho was absolutely furious that they didn't get that over the deal, over the line. The same with Alexandro last year. Uh, again, Mourinho was very, very angry about that. So look, the deal makers have got to make the deal. It's there to be done with Bruno Fernandes. He said, if there's, if there's an offer from somebody I can't refuse, then I want to go. So make him, make him an offer he can, I refuse. Anyway, staying with Italy, Napoli, Lozano, a player that I like, a player that a lot of you like, um, in the news yesterday that Herving Lozano, Napoli and Napoli sources talking about this, the deal's there to be done. Mino Riola, who's Herving Lozano's agent, wants the deal to be done. But Herving Lozano's holding out, hoping that Manchester United will come in at the end, at the last minute and he can go there. I mean, oh, I it just, it, you know, whether it's true or not, I think it probably is, does have an element of truth because he's meant to have been signing for Napoli for a long time. He still hasn't done it. And it just feels to me that maybe he is hanging on for Manchester United. And, and, and to me, somebody who wants Herving Lozano, and I understand some of you don't think he's that good, I genuinely do, go back, watch the video three years ago, London Hotel Room, Goldbridge talking about Lozano when he's back in Mexico, wanted us to sign him then, never stopped wanting to sign him. I think he's. I think he'd be brilliant for us on that right hand, that right wing. Um, 40 million quid to do it, and um, he seems to want to come to us as well. Massive star in Mexico, which, you know, that's not a reason to buy anybody, but, you know, United like to sell shirts. Why are we not on this deal? Apparently, Mino Riola's even said to him um, from the Italian sources, look, just sign for Napoli. You're, waiting, you're in for a long wait if you think United are coming in for you. But I just think 40 million quid, 40 million quid from PSV to get Herving Lozano. He's only bloody 23. I think he turns 24 this summer. But so what? He's a very, very talented player. I don't know why we're not on it. I don't know why we're not on it. He seems to want to come to us. A lot of United fans want to have him, but you know who's going to be the right wing option? Maybe we're holding out to do this Gareth Bale deal. And to be honest with you, I'd rather have Lozano because I think there's more there's more future in Lozano than there is in um, in um, the, in a Gareth Bale. Which brings me over to the hotter meter. You may have noticed it. I'd certainly forgotten about it. So what's the hotter meter on my left? It's basically Goldbridge's sort of United stand out of 10 top seven players that are most likely to come to Manchester United. So um, James is at the top. We've signed him, so he's got a star. He needs to come off, actually, but it's just to say bye-bye to James and to confirm that he's been done. Bruno Fernandes currently marking an eight out of 10, which I believe is, which eight out of 10 means there's an 80% chance we're going to sign him. And then below that, you've got Cooley Barley, Mounier, Harry Maguire, Wan-Bissaka, all four out of 10 at the moment, all a 40% chance. So less than 50-50 and a lit down at 30%. That's my current top seven at the moment. As you can see, no right wingers on there. I don't know what we're doing with right wingers. I don't know. I know we want a Jaden Sancho. I know that's highly unlikely now. So I don't know what we're doing with right wingers. I think with centre backs, there's a couple of options in there. Uh, three actually. And there's a couple of right back options because that seems to be the, the, the common denominator around United News at the moment and obviously Bruno Fernandes up there. So get in the comments below. Do you, do, do you agree? Do you disagree? Bruno Fernandes has always been in my top two or three and Mounier hangs in there just simply because I, I, of what I was told a couple of months ago. So that's that's where we are with that. Um, let's talk about Van der Beek from Ajax. Uh, interesting player this because this came out yesterday. Um, 
I, th I think these quotes came from uh, the Telegraph, a quite a reliable uh, outlet uh, journalist. Sorry, I forget the name, um, saying that Van der Beek would be interested in moving to the Premier League, and Manchester United and Spurs were mentioned. Obviously, there's going to be an Ajax exodus this summer. They've already lost a young. De Ligt's going to go. Maybe Ziyech's going to go as well. Um, Van der Beek could be another one. Only 22 years of age. You'd probably get him for about £25 million. I suppose the question is, a lot of people think, well, is he actually good enough? Is he just the third or fifth best, third, fourth or fifth best Ajax player? And, you know, now everyone's just buying Ajax players because they had a good season. I like Van der Beek. I mean, he didn't really start for, for Holland in the two Nation Leagues games. He came off the bench in both games, I believe. And uh, But I do like him. And actually, you know what? When I look at Van der Beek and I look at his attributes and, and, and the few games that I've seen him play... He is quite tenacious. He does like to carry the ball. He likes a pass. Um, I'd see him more as a box-to-box -box midfielder, although some people see him more as an attacking midfielder. Most of his position, uh, most of the time he's played, he's played as that some sort of number eight, number six sort of box-to-box -box player. So I think that um, I, I actually see him as a slight as a player that can be better than Herrera. The similarities be between Herrera, I don't really like calling players the next this, the next that. But I know for people who maybe haven't watched him or know what he's about, it's just easier to relate him to a player that we've had or have got at the club. So yeah, I mean, he is six foot as well. I mean, he's deceptively quite tall. I think he looks like he's a bit of a busy, smaller sort of player, but he is six foot as well. So he's got that physicality to him. Um, an interesting, an in, very interesting player. I mean, I'd be, you know, for 25 million, I wouldn't be opposed to Manchester United signing him. Dutch players do tend to, to do well in the Premier League and... Um, very intelligent players as well. I mean, there's a... Yeah, yeah, I, you know what? I, I quite like him. I do quite like him. I, I don't know whether it's just putting his name out there to, to sort of generate a bit of interest, but I, I do quite like the player, and I think you'd get him for a reasonable reasonable amount of money. Um, again, you know, when you look at Van der Beek as well, the thing that we maybe haven't mentioned for a few days, which is very important, I believe, is this whole um, talented player, young player, step up hungry and he ticks all those boxes and in fact he's you know he's is it a step up Ajax to Manchester United well technically it is but he's been improved himself in the Dutch side and and in the Ajax side and you know the higher echelons of the of the Champions League so I, I you know he's an interesting one he is an interesting one I mean I, I can't speak negatively about United if they do a deal like that because I, I, I quite like the deal I just think it's the fact that we've not really been linked to him and is he going to leave Ajax but yeah, you know, I, I actually could see him at Spurs. So why would we not want him at Manchester United? So yeah, I, I like the look of Van der Beek. I've got to be honest with you. Definitely, definitely do. Um, just going back to Napoli, I said I'd mentioned Hamas Rodriguez. Uh, the latest with Hamas Rodriguez is that Napoli actually want to sign him. So whether that's whether that means Napoli are massively strengthening and they're going to get Lozano and Hamas Rodriguez, or maybe it means that they're not going to get both because Hamas Rodriguez I think would be about forty million. But obviously, I'm a big fan of Hamas Rodriguez. I would take him. He's sort of one of my... I think we all have those players that, yeah, we probably know deep down they're not the right signing for United. But you have a weak spot for a player. I certainly have a weak spot for Hamas Rodriguez. And I'd like him at Manchester United. But out of interest, I just thought, you know, I've not heard anything about him for a while. So I did a bit of a digging around and spoke to a couple of people. And Hamas Rodriguez... Um, Napoli and Napoli are the ones that are strongestly linked to him at the moment. Obviously, he's gone back from Bayern Munich to Real Madrid. Um, Real Madrid will be looking to offload him about 40 million quid. Hamas Rodriguez, Napoli. I wouldn't be surprised if Wolves got linked to him though, because his agent is George Mendes. But at the moment, Hamas Rodriguez, Napoli. Does that mean we've got a better chance of getting uh, Irving Lozano? I don't know, but I'd quite fancy that. Um, the next player I want to talk about is. Um, well, let's sort of link this story and all, or we can sort of knit this story together. So obviously, David De Gea, um, PSG seems to be a story. Um, yesterday, lots and lots of news of Oblak to Manchester United. Now, I don't understand this because Oblak's a very good goalkeeper. And if De Gea left and we got Oblak, I think everybody would be exceptionally happy. But as far as I know, he signed a new contract with Atletico Madrid in April and there's a release clause of £100 million. So it doesn't make any sense. And, and suddenly he's a Manchester United fan as well. So I saw it in ESPN that Oblak's not happy with Atletico Madrid because they've not kept the promises that they made to him, presumably two months ago. Uh, he's a Manchester United fan and he would like to come to Manchester United. Well, look, Atletico Madrid have never been mugs in selling players. So I think if you wanted Oblak, you'd have to pay at least £80 million for him. I don't think United are going to do that when they're not even going to get 80 million for De Gea because he's only got a year left on his contract. But interestingly, um, Paris United, which are a quite a good resort, uh, um, source for PSG, 
They were talking yesterday that PSG are after Nav Kayla Navas or Donnarumma from AC Milan, which means, well, if they're not going for De Gea, where's De Gea going to go? I mean, if De Gea's not going to PSG, is he then, is it Navas to PSG and now De Gea to Real Madrid again? Or are Juventus still an option? I don't know. I just think this transfer window is so weird. It's such a weird one. We know United have got a lot of business to do. We also know they've got a few players to get rid of. We also don't know what's happening with Pogba and De Gea. And you start to think we physically haven't got enough time to do all these deals. So it's exciting, but it's like bloody hell, what's going on? It's Tuesday today. Are we going to do a deal this week? Because we, we, we desperately need to use every day that we can. So it's it's exciting it's nervy it's frustrating it's it's everything and that's you know i suppose that make that's what's making for a very very interesting transfer window but yeah well if KLR navas leaves um um real real madrid then presumably they would look for another goalkeeper although they have got um what's his face i, I can I, I can picture his giraffe neck and i can't think of his name begins with a c why can't i think of his name i should know his name he's a chelsea goalkeeper um for some reason, I want to say Contrao. It'll come back to me in a minute. Courtois, that's it. Um, so, yeah, maybe they wouldn't look at De Gea. Maybe Juventus would. They desperately need a top-class goalkeeper. Um, I don't know. Let's keep an eye on that. But I'll black to Manchester United. I'd be stunned if that happened. I really, really would, especially if he did sign that contract back at the start of the... Um, uh, back at the start of April with the release clause. And even if he hasn't got the release clause, he's still going to be about 80 million quid. So, for me, I, I quite like... I, I do quite like Donnarumma. Again, Mino Riola. Donnarumma client, um, Herving Lozano, Mino Riola, Mino Riola client, De Litt, Mino Riola client, you know, Pogba, Mino Riola client. He has got a very big uh, say to have on this summer transfer window and um, less than three weeks now to the team being back on pre-season tour, which, uh, sorry, on for pre-season. Although I do think that's a bit of a red herring because we don't go on the tour till the 10th of July. So I think that gives us another week, really. So really, we've got four weeks, four weeks for ins and outs. And to be honest with you, the outs don't matter too much. I don't really give a shit if um, Lukaku is still at the club on the 1st of July and we sell him on the 10th. That doesn't bother me because what he does pre-season doesn't bother me. And actually, if he's going to Italy, their pre-season will start a couple of weeks later than ours anyway. So the, I'm not too fussed about the outs as long as they happen. It's about the ins. In, out, shake it all about. Isn't it? Anyway, um, let's have a quick look at Football Index. Uh, remember, this is the uh, football stock market game where you can buy your shares in real life players. You've got to be over 18 to play it and please do gamble responsibly. But unlike your traditional bet where you put a £10 on a result and if it doesn't come in, you lose your tenner. With this game, you can buy shares in players. And as you can see on the stock market there, you've got people like Ronaldo who are trading at three at 278 a share. So um, if his share starts to go down, you can sell them and you won't lose your full stake. Like I say, I would go in there with a with a stake of about 20 quid so you can buy a fair, fair few shares in the players that you want to sign. Bruno Fernandes is definitely... Um, a player at the moment that you might want to keep your mind, keep your eye on. If I can just get him here, I can't really get him. Why is he not working for me there? Top two. Oh, because I know why I wasn't working, because I was looking at my portfolio. So Bruno Fernandes there, as you can see, over the last month, well, let's have a look at the last three months. He's gone up from about £1.30 a share, and he's currently around £2.20 a share. His price is constantly going up because he's a player that's heavily involved in transfers at the moment. And that is what prices will go up on. You can see Harry Maguire, you can see Yannick Carrasco, Donny van der Beek is another one we were just talking about there. Was at 170 a month ago, dipped a little bit. He's on his way back up again in the last month. Over the last six months, he's gone down from 50%, 50 pence a share to up there. And that's what will happen. A player's price will go up based on transfer activity, news around their name and performances on the pitch. Obviously, there are no performances on the pitch now, so it's all about transfers. So players you want to be looking at are those that are probably going to be moving to a better club, a better league. Harry Maguire there is a player that's on the rise because he's been linked to Manchester United and Manchester City at the moment. Herving Lozano is another one, steadily up there. And if you look at my portfolio, I've actually gone big on Bruno Fernandes. I've got nearly 200 shares in him and I've made 50 quid off him over the last couple of weeks because 
He's only going up 20, 27 pence a share, but the more shares you've got, the more profit you make. And at the moment, I'm £320 profit. Um, I've been playing it since around December time. Basically, I, I just acquire players and build up a, a portfolio of them. But you can sell and quick, you can buy, you can buy and sell as much as you want to. So um, if you're a, if you're somebody who goes for the short term or the long term, that's up to you. Link in the video description for Football Index. Do give it a go. Um, Got to be over 18. Do gamble responsibly. If you like football, um, uh, fantasy Premier League or FIFA Ultimate Team. You'll, you'll probably quite enjoy that. As I said, I'd go in with about 20 quid just to start off with, to play about with and see what you do. The more shares you buy in a player, obviously the more profit you make when their price goes up. And I, I personally think it's wise to sort of look at players that are looking at transfers over the summer. So thanks everyone for watching. Give us your comments below on Lozano, Bruno Fernandes, Van der Beek, the goalkeeper situation, Hammers Rodriguez, the hotter meter. Do you think I've got it right? Is 80% about right for Bruno Fernandes? Who do you fancy from that 40% section? I'll speak to you all later if there's any breaking news. Smash a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll speak to you all soon.